Now, it was the beginning of summer, and parents were flocking to the library. They all wanted their hands on this precious piece of paper. What was it, and why did they all want it? It was like the next BTS concert ticket, or a new video game. But in fact, it was none of those. Instead, it was every student's worst nightmare, those dreaded reading lists. Now, every year, the Cerritos Library would release a new reading list, and I would go to the library and read all of the books on the list by the end of summer. It was like a time test. I had to finish all of them, and it was like reading was a chore now. It wasn't something that I was enjoying. And traditional education has overall made reading something that isn't so enjoyable. And it's more than just being forced to read books, but the underlying issue that reading lacks representation. Now, more into these reading lists. Well, there would be about 50 books, and you would have to finish them by the end of summer. Well, parents would brag to each other about how smart their children are. You would be forced in your home to read all of the books. And honestly, it felt horrible, because I began to hate reading, something that's supposed to promote imagination, something that's supposed to be fun, an activity that you do to go into another world and learn more about these characters and get immersed into something different. But it didn't feel that way at all. Now, many parents like to make their children read all these books because they think there's some sort of academic excellence to it. So many parents thought, oh, maybe this will help with the Whitney writing test, or it will help you get better grades. But that wasn't really the case. Instead, these books forced me to close my horizons. I couldn't read a wide array of books. I couldn't read the genres I enjoyed. Instead, I was forced into a small group of books. I had to balance my fiction to my nonfiction and be careful about what books I'm choosing. But that isn't really the way that reading is supposed to be. Now, here's a reading list from when I was in fifth grade. It doesn't look harmful when you look at it with a first glance. But when you look carefully, all of the authors on this list are from European descent. Not one is a person of color. And this was hard for me, as I couldn't relate to the authors that I was reading. And I couldn't relate to the characters who weren't from the same background as me. And many other students I know felt the same way, because they wanted to hear their own voices, their stories, or learn more about their fellow peers. But instead, these books showed one side of the coin. They didn't show different perspectives. And frankly, our history textbooks are the same way. And it's important that we change this so that all students feel included. Now, moreover, traditional education promotes conformity, and it's buried in a mountain of elitism. So when you're reading books, your, your first read is usually at school. And in this classroom setting, you usually read about four books every year. And these books usually are by authors who are not of the same background as you. Now, they're usually of people who are European descent, the classics, the books that are the must-reads that everyone should be reading. But these first dives aren't so enjoyable because you can't see people who you relate to. And a study done in 2018 about diversity in children's books revealed shocking truths. Now, the first group that was the most represented were the people of white descent, and this was 50%. Now, this isn't so shocking. But the next shocking part was that the next group, who was the most represented, wasn't even another race. Instead, 27% were animals. And this reveals how much we're lacking representation in literature. The beauty of all the colors aren't showing through. And the number of animals is 10% higher than the number of African Americans, 20% higher than the number of Asian Americans, and a whopping 26% higher than the number of Native Americans. Now, only 1% of characters in books are Native Americans, and this is really shocking. We need to learn more about these underrepresented groups and make sure that our peers feel included. And there is a good side to this. Well, I have personally seen changes at Whitney. Now, originally, the ninth grade curriculum only had four books written by authors who were all of European descent, but this has changed. We have added books like The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas 
And books like this have shown more about the African American community, revealed different sides and showed their peers about how they experience police brutality. Or they themselves learned more about themselves and were able to share this knowledge with their peers about how they face social justice issues. So why not add diversity to our literature when it helps us learn more about social justice issues or just day-to-day -day life? Now, what I want you to do today is to go home and I want you to look at the books that you're currently reading. Are they from a diverse array of authors or is it just a small group of people? Now, if it is from a diverse group of authors, that's great. But what you can do is try to learn more about your own community. I've personally tried to make changes where I've tried to learn more about the Indian community. I've read books like The White Tiger or a book called The Road to Mumbai when I was younger. Books like this help me feel included and represented. I could finally read books where my community was there. I could hear their voices, the voices I hadn't heard growing up living in America. And many others feel the same way when they try to dive into books from their own community. And if you've already done that, maybe you can look at books from diverse groups that aren't from your own to learn more about how they feel. For example, the Native American community. They are so underrepresented and they haven't really been seen. Only 1% of them are in novels. Or if you've already done that, you can look to talk to your local leaders. Tell them about how you find a book so interesting and why it should be a part of your curriculum. Now, when you go home, look at all the books you're reading and make sure it's from a diverse group of people. If it's not, try to change this palette. Thank you.